So dear students, we are continuing the head injury and in continuation with head injury, I have already mentioned in my last class about the scalp injury, investigation, treatment and the examination of the head injury. Now today we will discuss and I have also mentioned the injury of the skull in details in my first class. And today we are going to going to describe you, uh, going to discuss you about the management of the head injury in association with injury of the other components of the head. That just I have mentioned about the Glasgow Coma scale. When you are going to discuss about the head injury, you must be know the Glasgow Coma scale and must be remember on the tip of the tongue uh, because all the investigation, treatment and management of the head injury depends on the Glasgow Coma scales, the, the points on which we depends and the criteria of the uh, treatment and outcome of the treatment is uh, outcome of the treatment depends on the Glasgow Coma scale. So we just I have already described or de described the head injury in the minor, mild and moderate and also the severe head injury on the basis of the Glasgow Coma scale. Today we will discuss about uh, how do you manage the head injury minor or mild head injuries and when you are going to receive the patient of head injury in the casualty. In the beginning, what are the criteria of, of uh, 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 just determine the patient, the proper history of the patient and then treat the patient and then you make it discharge. So when there is a minor head injury or mild head injury, criteria of discharge from the casualty, when the GS, that is Glasgow comma scale age 50 or without, without loss of consciousness. So you can in such type of patient which the Glasgow comma scale is 50, then you can discharge the patient from the casualty if there is no history of voting more than once. When the patient has not voted uh, more than once, then you can examine and, and prescribe and treat the patient and you can discharge the patient at the same time after observation of one or two hours and then, then you give the discharge to the patient. When there is no loss of consciousness, even if there is no history of loss of consciousness, you can take proper history of the patient of the about the accident and then, then you examine the patient and then if there is nothing and if there is criteria that is GS case call is 50, then you can discharge the patient from the casualty. The responsible attendant, the patient who has come with minor head injury or mild head injury, if he is having responsible attendance, then only you can discharge because when you will going to discharge the patient with no proper attendance is there, patient may get worse and <coughs> cause cause uh, seriousness. So the responsible person or responsible attendant should be with the person or with the patient of the minor head injury, then only you can think about the discharge of the patient from the hospital or the casualty. When there is no history of drug or alcohol impaired, then you can also you can also uh, examine the patient for alcohol by smelling his breath and then only if there is no history of drug or alcoholism, then you can make it discharge when head injury of mild nature. And you always give the written discharge and also give the verbal advice to the patient when the, the condition worsen. Abolo. Abolo. Ah, okay. Ah. I am a very political guy. So, the retain or verbal <coughs> discharge advice should be given to the patient 
and then only you can make it discharge with, with proper advice to the patient and you should warn the patient that or to the attendant if any worsening of the uh, condition occurs then soon soon visit the casualty again. So these are the criteria of the discharge of the mild injury. You take the proper history of the patient, you examine the uh, patient properly and when GCS, the Glasgow Coma scale is 50, not uh, more than uh, that means less than 15, then only you can make a discharge and then the another criteria for hospitalization of the mild cases which can be uh, turned into the serious one or moderate type of head injury, then criteria for hospitalization and CT scan also. When you examine, you take the proper history of the patient and examine the patient and when the examination of the patient having Glasgow comma scale 30 or less than 30 uh, with the loss of the consciousness then you should, you should hospitalize the patient and give the proper care side by side you give the resuscitation breathing should be corrected, oxygen should be given and circulation should be maintained in case of the moderate type of head injury when the Glasgow coma scale is 13 or less than 30 with loss of the consciousness so and also here the CT scan should, should be secondary when the patient is serious or having difficulty in the breathing or having difficulty or hypoxia is there or where the hypotension is there. You don't think of uh, CT scan at that time. First you resuscitate the patient by giving the uh, oxygen inhalation and maintain the circulation and then the patient coming. Uh, control then you only can send the patient for CT scan. So CT scan because CT scan itself is very expensive and also it it radiation it gives so many radiation at a time and now it, it is also time consuming. All these things make the CT scan to be uh, only done when there is some proper uh, criteria are there that is when the patient is of moderate head injury and history of loss of consciousness is there when history of vomiting more than one time then only you can you can send the patient for CT scan also after admission of the patient when the seizure when there is convulsion of the patient after the accident or the road traffic accident or far from the height then only you can send the patient or CT scan after hospitalization of the patient and resuscitation. The comorbid patient, that is the patient who is having uh, other organic diseases like hypertension or having uh, cardiovascular disease or having uh, diabetes mellitus, such patients should always be treated in the hospital and CT scan should be done at the time. Then if there is history of the alcoholism, you ask the patient from the patient's attendant about the drug or about the alcohol and then patient is habituated to alcohol, you should also hospitalize the patient for management and resuscitation and after resuscitation you send the patient for CT scan. So CT scan should be done to the patient, some criteria are there, not all the patients of the head injury should be sent for CT scan because CT scan is positive appearance and it also takes some time and radiation is also of great problem. Uh, so CT scan, but CT scan should, should be done for proper diagnosis. If there is some intracranial hematoma, then you, you, you can save the patient by doing the CT scan, you can know the uh, space of the fine region or the uh, hematoma inside the inside the skull, and then you you treat the patient by evacuating the hematoma, and you can save such type of patient. So in such type of patient, the CT scan is must and can save the life of the patient. So these are the criteria to which patient should be discharged from the casualty in case of the mild injury and criteria for hospitalization when 
the GS, GCS is 13 or you can also do this CT scan. So these are the management and the criteria of discharge and criteria of hospitalization of the patient of the mild type. Now come to the injury of the scar. I have mentioned that the head injury could include the a scalp injury first. I have already mentioned the scalp injury in details in my first class. Today we will discuss about just near the uh, under the scalp, the ascal. This part that is the ascal is the bony, bony cave. That means you can say the uh, very strong box of the ascal made up of uh, so many uh, flat bones joined with each other by the sutures, line, and so head eye injury takes place on the head with a great blow or with the blow sufficient to get fracture of the skull and a skull in case of the injury you can divide the skull into the two parts that is the vault of the skull and the cranial fossa. The vault of the skull that is the upper part of the skull that contains the uh, occipital bone uh, and also the frontal bone that means the parietal bones all these included in the vault and on base of the uh, a skull that is on which the uh, brain is situated that is called cranial fossa. So first we will discuss about the vault uh, injury and then the cranial fossa injury. Such type of injury only takes place the ecological factors are if fall from the height with, with head uh, on the floor or uh, from the stairs then then you can get the fracture of the vault artery that is the road traffic accident that takes place and it is serious type of uh, uh, injury and it should also cause the head injury in association with the injury of the other organ also that is the in secondary survey. Uh, but in primary survey you should you should take out that think of about the fracture of the vault in our day the homicidal sometimes someone has a heavy blow on the head and cause uh, this uh, blow can cause the fracture of the vault of the skull because it is made up of the thin flat bones so fracture can take place due to the due to the heavy blow on the skull with the blood given by the by the other uh, persons that is homicidal is also and also by inside. The vault fracture is which type of fracture takes place in the vault that is simple linear fracture. Just if there is any glue on the head or the skull, minor type of uh, injury that can cause the even the injury of the skull as well as injury of the vault of the skull. And it is very common uh, the injury of the part of the skull, the linear fractures, they only uh, passes through the suture's line, but sometimes the this linear fracture if it passes through the temporal hole, that is the uh, underneath which the uh, which the mediterranean artery passes anterior branch that that cause tear of the mediterranean artery and it becomes serious condition and then call the intracranial hematoma and so simple linear fracture so is, a, is a only serious when it passes through the temporal bone and injury the inner uh, part of the brain that is caused here of the mediterranean artery and anterior branch that may cause intracranial hematoma and then become uh, very serious and, uh, in other ways that is the simple linear fractures in which uh, common fracture and doesn't require any treatment when it is not uh, associated with injury of the deeper structures or the brain and simple linear fractures it will live as such and then gives the analgesic and it will be cured itself but when it is associated with the uh, associated injury with the uh, cranial uh, vessels then only you can think of about the management in, in serious head injury uh, headaches. Now the second type of fracture, the compound fracture, all the injury of the head with which or the fracture of the 
world of the skull, associating with the injury of the skull, the repairing of the skull with compound fracture. Compound fractures means it is, uh, it is uh, combined with the, it is combined with the environment and that cause, that cause contamination of the intracranial content that is the brain and encephalitis or many diabetes can take place. So compound fracture is the serious one and it should not be treated uh, simply and it should be treated uh, precociously and then compound fracture because it is of great danger for the infection of the intracranial content of the brain that is the meninges and blood vessels and the uh, brain tissue. So compound fracture should be treated very precociously after and uh, cleaning and then you do the all the investigation like CT scan and find out whether which type of compound fracture is there. The other type of injury of the skull is the depressed fracture. Depressed fracture of the skull that is the uh, skull uh, uh, flat bone and when any blow takes place on the skull uh, and then uh, in children mostly that that cause depression of the flat bone and that is called depressed fracture. It can also take place in the adult also when the blow is very hard and when suppose they are hit uh, some blow by the uh, heavy objects or far from the height then cause, cause depressed, depressed fracture of the skull and it may, it can, it can, it can injure the outer as the inner surface of the heart of the uh, skull and inner content or inner uh, surface of the heart can cause damage of the brain and brain tissues also. So depressed fracture should be treated properly by elevation of the depression and also if sometimes it happens so that the depressed fracture will uh, get, in, uh, get in, uh, indented into the brain tissue or in the meningitis, in this condition the focal neurological sign is there, there is hemiparesis or maybe there are uh, monoparesis of the limbs also. So in case of the depressed fracture, it should be treated properly by elevation of the depression and if there is any content or if there is any uh, fragments of the bone that get involved, get into the brain tissue should be taken out and normal sign was should be done and should be repaired properly so that the infection doesn't take place and then antibiotics should be given and proper rest to the patient should be given and then only the depressed fracture you can deal with. So, <coughs> Another sometimes it happens so that the depressed fracture, that is the depression fracture is just very uh, big in size and cause, cause loss of the uh, skull at the site of the depression with the fragments of the flat uh, uh, bone and so you remove it then it, the, then it can be, it can be treated with <coughs> proper uh, um, plastic that is the plastic surgery should be done by giving the some uh, seed or giving the artificial uh, monofilament seed and then you can treat it, cover the whole of the brain and the intracranial structures by doing the bioplastic. The other fracture is the bone fracture. Bone fractures occurs when the, the force of uh, the blow is uh, hard and the substance is very uh, small on such as the injury with the with the pebbles or injury with the uh, small rocks or injury with the uh, cricket balls so in such type of uh, when it hits to the world of the skull cause forms depression that is the content of the depressed part and and it cause depression of the or compression of the intracranial parts that is the meninges and also the brain tissue. The, the last one is the skeletal fracture, the top of the simple type of fracture that is the skeletal fracture in which there is a radiation of uh, the fracture bone that is the radiation line is there from at the site of the uh, hitting of the substance 
that just like they are split, they, they born in a fragmented uh, with, uh, uh, with a spinach like radiating from the center and that is called a spinach fracture. In such type of fractures also takes place in the bullet injury when the bullet is tied to the uh, uh, a skull bone, it will be at the site of the strike, it causes uh, radiation of the fracture slide from the center and it, you can see the aesthetic fractures of, of the part of the uh, skull. Now come to the fracture of the cranial fossa. Cranial fossa is the part of the skull on which the brain tissues or the whole of the brain is situated and it, it can be divided into the anterior cranial fossa, middle cranial fossa and posterior cranial fossa. The, the etiological factor here in case of the heavy type of uh, accidents or the, such as head to head collision of the vehicle or the air, air uh, uh, aeroplane uh, accidents in such type of heavy type of uh, blow or trauma can cause fracture of the cranial fossa because cranial fossa is well protected by the nature and it only takes place only in such type of injury that is heavy in nature and cause fracture of the anterior cranial fossa and this anterior cranial fossa that the middle cranial fossa and posterior cranial fossa can associate with the cranial nerve injury. Now, um, how do you know that the fracture of the anterior cranial fossa is there? When fracture of the anterior cranial fossa, that rhinitia is there. Rhinitia is the condition in which they have CSF leaking. And this CSF leaking through the nose, and there is also distraction because when fracture of the anterior cranial fossa takes place, the tearing of the meningeal takes place and tearing of the meningeal leading to the leaking of the CSF, and that will that will come out from the nasal cavity and also the blood vessels will be tear and then it causes bleeding and bleeding also occurs from the nose. So rhinuria and epistaxis is, is the main clinical feature of the uh, anterior cranial fossa injury. Not only it is there, there is also the ecchymosis on the uh, 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 both eyelids that is called raccoon's, raccoon's eye. Raccoon's eye, that is the ecmosis on the both of the eyelids that lead to the uh, collection of the, or the collection of the uh, blood underneath of the skin of the orbital region and that is called raccoon's eye. The, so in case of the fracture of the anterior canalsa, anuria is there, and the taxis is there, raccoon eye is there. You should, you should remember three things that is raccoon side and rhinuria and uh, also a epistaxis. The fracture of the middle cranial fossa takes place also with a heavy uh, injury or with a heavy accident. And in the case of the middle cranial fossa, when the fracture of the middle cranial fossa, that cause, cause the leaking, that is also cause damage of the meningeal and the blood vessels and their age, leaking of the uh, cerebrospinal fluid, CSA, from the ear. When their tympanic membrane is perforated, then there will be otoria, that is the coming of the clear fluid, CSA, from the uh, ear and also there will be uh, injury of the blood vessels and may be associated with the uh, blood, CSA, containing discharge coming from the ear when there is middle cranial fossa fracture is there. Also there is a uh, type of uh, ecchymosis and, and that is called battle's sign. Battle's sign is just in, uh, in the back of the ear. Uh, there is collection of the uh, CSF and also the collection of the blood that produce a sign that is called battle sign. Battle sign is the characteristic features of the fracture of the middle cranial fossa by which the leaking of the CSA and the blood from in the middle ear. And in this way you can diagnose the fracture of the middle cranial fossa. We now come to the posterior cranial fossa, the third last cranial fossa that is on which the 
base of the brain, that is the phones is situated and it may <coughs> very serious when it is associated with the injury of the bones and you can lose the patient by, by fracture of the posterior tibial fascia due to the injury of the bones because bones is very important. The structures that regulate all the respiration and other vital, uh, vital <coughs> functions of our body and it is associated with a uh, sudden death of the patient in case of the fracture of the posterior tibial fascia if it is associated with the injury of the bones. But in case of the posterior tibial fascia, you will find clinically there is ecchymosis on the our bogies swelling on the back of the uh, muscular process, and this is due to the leaking of the CSA and the uh, cranial uh, and the blood underneath of the skin of the uh, muscular region and cause bony swelling, and so you can diagnose the clinically the fracture of the posterior cranial fossa. The investigation that you should do always the uh, that is plain x-ray can be uh, diagnosed properly so that the CT scan should be done and CT scan becomes the boon for the uh, treatment and management and investigation of the head injury and you can diagnose the diagnose the fracture of the all the cranial fossa or fracture of the vault of the skull also and also the sinuses by the CT scan and CT scan will tell you all whole of the history that whether the fracture of the anterior cranial fossa, middle cranial fossa, posterior cranial fossa and also associated with injury of the injury of the cranial nerve. Injury in case of the injury of the cranial nerve. Uh, multi cranial or the cranial fossa injury that is in case of the middle cranial fossa the most commonly affected cranial nerve is the seventh and eighth cranial uh, that the seventh and eighth cranial nerve paralysis can take place if the fracture of the middle cranial fossa and associated with the injury of the um, cranial nerves that is the seventh and eighth ninth and tenth cranial nerve that gets injured with the uh, fracture of the posterior cranial fossa and, and you should also diagnose it by the CT scan and by the by, by uh, clinical examination. So these are the investigations and proper diagnosis of the injury of the skull. Now come to the treatment. Treatment I have already mentioned separately that is the main the fracture of the heart of the skull. If linear fracture is there, you have to do nothing. You only wait and watch of the patient. It will heal the skull because the flat bone, when flat bone is uh, there and linear fracture is there, no uh, questions of uh, displacement of the bone. So leave it as such and watch the patient with an algesic and uh, prophylactic antibiotic and patient will get killed within two or three weeks. So the linear fracture does not need any treatment but in case of the uh, fractures of the cranial fossa you should be careful it also conservative treatment should be done that when the rhinuria is there the rhinuria the infector infection should not take place and so you should take the antibiotic prophylactic antibiotic should be given and not only this you should also take the precautions that the the leaking leaking CSA should be why it is sterilized God uh, openly and then leave the patient with the patient to the rest and in proper due course of time to a three day it will take place of the malignant malignant and, and the and leaking of the CSA will be stopped and patient will get cured <coughs> without any proper surgery or without any surgery, surgical intervention and so you treat the patient uh, of such type of patient in case of the fracture of the in case of the middle cranial fossa fracture there is rhinorrhea autoria that is the leaking of the CSA from the uh, ear and it should also be uh, it should also be treated with wiping and uh, cleaning of the uh, blood and the CSA uh, of healthy and then then give the rest to the patient the divide to the patient and patient the, the meningitis will get healed and the CSA will be stopped and then patient will be alright. Now come to the 
treatment of the cranial nerve. Usually of the cranial nerve cause paresis or paresis of hemiparesis or even the paresis of the face or facial paralysis and it should be treated by, by the hydrocortisone uh, medication. That is hydrocortisone medication should be given in tackling dosage for one or two weeks. <coughs> and antibiotics should also be given, rest of the patient should be given and then if the proper uh, uh, development of is there then you continue the treatment if it uh, doesn't respond even after the 4 or 5 days then decompression of the cranial nerve because when cranial pusa get fractured there is pressure on the neck the cranial nerve and cause paralysis of the cranial nerve so cranial depression of the cranial nerve should be uh, should be taken out by surgical methods and and you should do the surgery for decompression of of the uh, cranial uh, nerve so that the pressure should get off pressure and then cranial nerve function get on the cane it function properly so this is all about today the, the whole of the management of the mind and the injury of the skull that I would like to sum up whole of the session today that you should know what is the criteria of the patient to admit in the hospital, what is the criteria of the patient for doing the CPS scan, what is the criteria of the patient for discharge and how the Injury of the skull takes place, injury of the vault of the uh, uh, skull, injury of the cranial fossa, and how do you treat the patient properly. So, this is all about today. Thank you.